The Boilers will start it off. Yeah, Purdue has won nine straight meetings. Last five at Assembly Hall. Can the Hoosiers kind of change that trend this evening? There is Edie on top. Don't see him there very often. Getting back in the post now. Stefanovic had a great game on Monday. That's a lot of beef to push down low for Trace Jackson Davis. Shot clock at four. Little floater is long. No good. We got a first whistle. We get a foul on the floor. Here's Edie. Working against Jackson Davis. And he traveled. That she can kind of make it a little bit more difficult for Edie to operate down low. Looking for Jackson Davis, but tough to get it inside there. Edie, number 15 for Purdue, is 7-4. Instead, they'll launch it from deep. That's no good by Thompson. And here comes Purdue. Three-pointer up by Gillis. Got him. He can really shoot it out there. 53% from downtown. Well, Jaden Ivey, Zach Edie, you're going to talk about Travion Williams. They're going to get a lot of the... Headlines, but I think it's Mason Gillis who may be the linchpin to this team because of his outside shooting, his ability to guard multiple position, and straight up his toughness. Thompson working down low against Gillis, denied, and we get a whistle. Travel together to keep Cleveland Cavs, and then I got to know him really, really well after that out here in California. Uh, just happy for him, what he's been able to bring to the table for IU. Good entry, Edie, patient underneath, and one. And zip passes or lob passes in there that gives him time and gives him health and gives him support. We talked about Edie and Williams. They kind of split time during the game, so we'll see Travion Williams a little later. Quick 5-0 start for Purdue. A little bob and weave up top here. That's Johnson. The transfer kicks it out. Stewart three-pointer, no good. Good rebound. Thompson soft, can't get it to fall. And Edie has the board. Here comes Ivy on the run out. He is aggressive to the rack. Finger roll is long. Hoosiers looking for their first bucket. Little helter skelter to start inside, up and short on the shot by Galloway. Yeah, good, cut, good cut back door, but then Mason Gillis right there. I'm telling you, Lunchman being there, not just on the offensive end, but reading out, seeking out that play, able to take that. It could have been a, a layup away. Inside, Edie against a triple team. Doesn't matter. He dunks it home. A couple assists to start. From Gillis, too, on the perfect lob there. Hoosiers could use a bucket. You could feel the crowd a little anxious in the early going. And we get a foul. How difficult does it make it with his wingspan? He's 7 4. Well, I mean, listen, because we don't see it as much anymore as in regards to dominant post players like that, where we're just going to force feed the post. So you don't play against it, you don't see it. But now when you do, you realize how difficult it is. And the question you have to ask yourself. Are we more willing to give up his two points or double team and then give up three? Right. So Indiana finally gets on the board. A couple free throws from Johnson. 7 2 Purdue in the early going. Looking for Edie again. This time Gillis working against Thompson. Not there. Ivy. Wide open from three. In and out, no good. Tipped around. Indiana rebound with Thompson. Johnson, the lob and the dunk. Alley oop to Jackson Davis. And it was a quick decision. That time by Johnson to get downhill, but then attract Ivy and then locating TJD on the backside for the lob. Stefanovic in trouble. And gets it to go. Crafty move by the fifth-year senior. Yeah, and, and proving, too, that he's not just a spot-up shooter or a catch-and-shoot kind of guy. That time he was able to put it on the deck. A couple of dribbles used that 6'5 frame inside to score that basket. Stutter dribble and 
in the reverse. Nicely done. Xavier Johnson's got four. Wide open three on a good screen, and that's easy money for Isaiah Thompson. He's 41% out there in his first points of the night. Yeah, he, and he needed that to this one of four in, in the last game against Illinois, and one of four behind the three point line, all the shots. So good to see him able to knock in that first one if you're Purdue. A little floater, gets his own rebound, taps it in by Johnson, who's been active early. He's got a quick six. But the question was what defensively you knew where IU was going to be but offensively could they generate enough offense to kind of stay in the game and I know it's early but I like the way that Indiana is attacking Purdue early Thompson three again that time no good Edie offensive board fighting for it and he gets fouled Well, it's interesting, you know, Jackson Davis is their leading scorer, and you see early on, it'll be interesting without him in the game here, Xavier Johnson with the ball, he's been really aggressive to start. Well, he has been, but look at the gamesmanship, so to speak, you see that Travion Williams is now inserted in that lineup. Zach like Eady getting a blow while TJD is out the game. Mm -hmm. They drive inside, but contested there by Travion Williams, as Jim just told you about. And now Purdue has it up 13 8 here in this first half. You're going to see a big contrast if you haven't watched Purdue play. You go from Edie, who's just, as Lab called him, the glacier inside, yeah, uh -huh. so talented. And now Williams, who's one of the best passing big men, maybe the best in the country. And he pulls, as you see, Stavanovich coming off that screen. Beautiful just being able to square up his shoulders. But the difference with Williams, too, is this. I'm talking to Coach Woodson. You don't want to really double team him unless he gets going, but he's so good at now passing out of the post, mm. he can pick you apart. Zafanovic with the third three of the night for Purdue, and now let's see how the Hoosiers react. Johnson playing a little two man game. Where Zafanovic is at. A little floater again by Johnson it is a little short. He's a leading scorer for Indiana in the early going with six. Stefanovic launching downtown. That one is no good. And Johnson's got the board. Looking to push it. And we get a foul. Critical stage right now. You only, you're only you down eight. You don't want to go down double figures. So pick offensive possession. Good kick out there. Wide open Geronimo. No. And Williams has the board. Well, Jordan Geronimo was terrific in the win over Nebraska the other day. Playing because Jackson Davis got hurt in that game. That's a foul trouble too. Couldn't connect here. Here's Hunter on the drive. Projected, at least knocked away by Finnessy. So, I mean, you've got this Purdue team, number four in the country. And look, they are an offensive force, the best in the Big Ten, but you're going against the best defense in the Big Ten. So something's got to give here tonight. It's Williams working on Durr, the seven footer. A little floater, turn around, no good. Indiana with the board, it's Galloway. The defense that time by Durr, forcing Williams to kind of go back away from the basket with that jump hook. Quick double team on Durr. He doesn't get a lot of minutes, only about seven a game. And you may see him a lot more in this first half. <laughs> you better believe it. He's going to shoot it up. It's soft touch, but couldn't get it to fall. If you can't get the ball inside, maybe now your three-point shooting is in effect or vice versa. It makes them so good. Number four in the country. They were number one for the first time in their program history earlier this year. Here is Williams. Gets the double and loses it. Here comes Indiana. They need to get hot here. Only three of 12 shooting from the floor thus far. Finnessy in at the point will launch it himself and connect. They needed that. Their first three of the night. Well, they needed it. More importantly, Robert, he, he uh, Rob Finnessy needed it from his confidence perspective. Huge if he can knock in shots similar to what he was able to do against Ohio State. Williams against Durr. Soft touch, and he gets it to go. Well, with Finnessy, this is a guy that was a three-year starter. That's him with the ball right now. And now off the bench, an adjustment 
You know he's got it in him, right? Now can he show it? Well, it's more so, I believe, in between his ears. Outstanding freshman year. I thought he would be one of the better, more important, and confident he'll be offensively. Yeah, I see the numbers for him. The freshman you talked about to climb, but guess what? He's confident here and drains it. Listen to Jim Jackson. That's all you need to do. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, I've seen this young man play since he's been a freshman. He has something in his in his game. He just has to believe in it. I know his teammates and coaching staff do. Now it's a four-point Purdue lead. Ivy to the rack. Gillis loses it. In trouble. Scoots it out. Morton has it. Swing it around. Three is off the mark. Gillis still with the offensive board, and they'll reset. Williams says, get out of there. Durr's done a nice job coming and getting some minutes here without Trace Jackson Davis out with two quick fouls. This is Tamar Bates, the freshman out of Kansas City in the game now. Inside, Durr can't get it to go. It'll go and shoot. Coach Woodson chooses to do if it's a spot minute situation where maybe Edie is not in there and he brings him back in or just keeps him out. Fantasy, good setup. Bates can't get it to go. This place would have erupted. Edie with the rebound. It's a great point, right? I mean, is it automatic he's out for the rest of the half? Well, I, you know, I think it depends on who you're playing and how much trust you have in an individual player with their experience that he won't pick up that third foul. So let's just keep our eye on the decision making of Coach Woodson. We'll say this, he's never fouled out in his career. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> My goodness. His first two tonight, and that was with an exclamation point. You okay? Uh, I, I'm glad this is a swivel chair, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> that was unreal. Here's Bates. Fantasy has really injected life into the Hoosiers here in this first half when they needed it. Couple of threes, now takes it to the rack up, and under is good! Rob Finnessy with eight points. That's a game high. And Indiana just keeping this game within the balance. And that's the beautiful part of playing at home. The crowd gets into the game. You get motivated. Then you can get inspiration from a player like Rob Finnessy. Looking for some space. And a turnover. Finnessy's got the steal. He's done it all. Is he going to go all the way? Takes it amongst the trees and scores. Mm, can't make the three-point play, and Purdue's got it. I mean, what a shot in the arm. You asked me when we walked in that I, you know, he said Indiana's got to score. Who's going to give it to him? They lose the fifth-leading scorer in the conference early, and you're thinking, oh, man, and here's Finnessy who has stepped up in a huge way. Now it's Edie working out of the block. Ivy. Great defense that time by Indiana recovering. Three on the clock, 80 inside, man. Just patience, gets it up and in. Joe Cool, no problem. Well, that's experience from this Purdue team not panicking when they didn't get their first, second, or third option offensively. Well, Indiana got off to such a cold start, starting to feel it now. Finnessy can do no wrong. And we get a whistle. Well, now it buys you a little bit more time, it right? Because it's a one-point game as opposed to an eight-point well, game. Well, that decision is made a lot easier because the others have stepped up big time for Indiana to keep this game to a one-point advantage for Purdue. And now you don't have to make that decision. In and out from Bates, and Williams has it for the Boilers. The biggest lead was eight, now one point game. Indiana's defense all over Purdue right now. Ivy strong to the rim, can't get it to go. Rebound, Gillis up and in. He's He understands his role. Shoots 57% from the field, 53 from behind three-point. Right. Okay? 
he understands that he can play off of the three or four other guys that are on the court and still get his money on. You know, he doesn't have to force things, and he understands his role as a sophomore. That's the key. Tennessee, good look inside. Thompson gets fouled. Down a great year, career high points per game for him. Misses on that one, and Ivy's got it. So two point game under six minutes to go, and a really fun first half in this interstate rivalry. Purdue, the number four team in the country, and Indiana. Williams bobbles, and Indiana's got it. They'll lead it out, and Pasco is a little awry, so they'll set it up again. Maybe not. Get it inside, and there is Jordan Geronimo for the dunk. We are tied. The Hoosiers have never led. And we get a whistle here. Well, oh, just a tough little passing angle right there by Ray Sampson. This active hands, and now that's a seven turnover. Your safe place has to be taking care of home court. And uh, uncharacteristic, <laughs> uncharacteristically, uh, do some things they're not accustomed to. No, I knew what you were saying. Meanwhile, though, can't take advantage. Jordan Toronto missed the front end of a one and one. So Indiana by one, just over five to go in the first half. Stefanovic inside, rejected. There was Geronimo. Numbers if they push it. Thompson, good. This place is going nuts. Indiana was down by eight, now they're up by three. A 9-2 run by Indiana. Now it's Hunter, the senior guard, trying to settle things down. Williams hasn't been a factor. That's his fifth turnover of the first half. Here come the Hoosiers. Fantasy finishes. He's got 15. It's a season high. And the largest lead of the night for the Hoosiers. Kick out, Stefanovic launching, no good. Finnessy's got the board, why not? <laughs> launching oh, from way down. <laughs> oh, he was feeling it. You know what, and I'm sure Coach Woodson said, you know, I'm gonna give you a pass on that one because you're playing so well <laughs> for that heat check. He hasn't missed until then. Here's Newman. Gillis short on the three, and Indiana's got it. Galloway kind of out of control, but he gets bailed out, going to get a blocking call. And he will go to the line, and we'll have a break. It's down only 24 points, which allowed now Indiana at times to get out in transition and get 10 points off those nine turnovers. That's a great point. I mean, consider Purdue's the fourth best offense in the country, fourth best shooting team in the country. They got 24 points, three and a half to go in this first half, and we get a whistle. And get a foul on Indiana. Indiana has got their biggest lead, and the first free throw is no good. And he has one of two. It's an 11 0 Indiana run. Edie, good pass inside first. Can't get it to go, and Indiana's got it. Everything was excellent at that time by Purdue. You get it to Edie first, you back door, but it was a contest at the end that kind of made first kind of double pump that dunk attempt and come up a little bit short. Finnessy has been amazing. Because of that, Johnson hasn't played a whole heck of a lot, but you know what? He goes right to the glass and puts it home. He had that good start. Remember, he's got eight points. So the two guards for Indiana have carried the torch up by 10, 233 to go from Assembly Hall. Yeah. 
Newman. And a steal. And a foul. A lot of credit is due to the Indiana defense and what they're doing in regards to not allowing Purdue to really after the initial thrust when they were up 16 to 8 to get comfortable. 2-10 to go first half. Boy, has this game turned around. Stefanovic from deep. Can't get it to go. Finnessy's got it. Thompson kicks it out. Three ball. Johnson. No. Edie has it for the Boilers. First with the drive. Nice kick. Edie lays it in. And that was the Purdue offense. We're accustomed to seeing quick plays or dribble drive, and you kick it out and make a play. Now, if you're Purdue, you're thinking, can we get the stops needed, get this lead below double dig digits? We know we has, haven't played well, but at least it gives us some life going into halftime. Fantasy. How in the world did he get that to go? Oh, my goodness. 17 off the bench. His career high is 18 in a full game. He's got 17 off the bench in the first half. Edie against a double team. Just no open shots. No. Edie tries to create. Shot clock winding down. In trouble. Rejected by Thompson. Finnessy lets it fly. No. But gets his own board up. No good. <laughs> he is everywhere. Couldn't get it to fall. Hey, can't knock the hustle right there with Rob Finnessy. He missed a shot. He knew where it was coming off at. Unfortunately, couldn't get up past Edie on the second attempt. That's a little extra incentive from Lafayette, Indiana. How about that? Uh huh. It's like there's a Hollywood theme here. <laughs> I see what you're doing. Uh huh. Just building it up for the second half. Edie. It's been the one true offensive force all half for Purdue. They've gotten shut down by this great Indiana D. Nine seconds ago in the half, the drive is up and good by Thompson. His fifth point. Four seconds now with three. Johnson at the horn. Can't get it to go. Rejected by Edie. Unexpected chocolate chip cookies. After dinner, bro. You know, you don't prepare for it, but you love it when you get it. Oh, you're just getting me hungry. <laughs> All right, so a nine point lead. We start the second half from Bloomington. Glad to have you aboard along with Jim Jackson, our entire FS1 college basketball crew. I'm Kevin Burkhardt. Purdue had the early start up 7 0. They had an eight point lead, but Indiana obviously came storming back, and they'll save it here. And in and out of the hands of Trace Jackson Davis. And that's the other thing. Their star, that man right there, played less than six minutes with foul trouble. They did it without him. Now how do they adjust with him back? Well, you don't want to slow it down. And on that play right there, even with Zach Eady guarding Trace Jackson, it was a double team that came. And he almost turned it over. So let's keep our eye on how the offense operates now that TJD is back in the lineup. And Purdue looking for some offense of their own. Ivy had a quiet first half outside of that dunk. Let's it go mm. from three and connects, and that's a good start. Well, it, it really is because Jaden Ivy picking up that second foul was inactive the last five minutes and 26 seconds. So if he can get going, you know, this is a Purdue team, as we know offensively, is a very difficult team to stop. This is Parker Stewart with the dribble from the wing. No good. Stefanovic has the board. Here comes Ivy. Edie. He had a good first half. Working the double here. Thompson for three. Good. What a start to this half for Purdue. Right, and it's Zach Edie locating on the weak side. Isaiah Thomas, who was helped out that time by Mason Gillis with that screen. And so a quick run to start this half. All of a sudden, it's a three-point lead for Indiana. Johnson. Oh, nice. Lefty scoop is good for Xavier Johnson. Who had a really nice first half. 
before giving way to Finnessy, who was still unconscious. He couldn't come out, but that's 10 points now for Johnson. Yeah, 10 points with zero turnovers, which is more important. Here's 80 against Trace Jackson Davis, who's got the two fouls. Ivy switches hands and he draws the harm. He's never fouled out in his college career. And now he's got both free throws. Well, I think what I think is important too for Trace Jackson Davis is that he keeps his head in the game. They're going to need him in this second half. He figured this game is going to be a boxing match and he's going to be reinserted into the lineup and probably will have an impact on it. See how long he stays out. Here's Race Thompson. Turnaround is good. Smooth from Race Thompson, his fifth point. Perfect compliment to TJD offensively and defensively. Well, Thompson almost lost it. And then corralled it to save it. Here is Purdue and Ivy. Feeling it from deep. He's got it again. Uh oh, Jaden Ivy is heating up. He had two in the first half. He's got eight already. First three minutes of the second half. Johnson in some traffic. Thompson will let it go. Couldn't let it fall and rebounded by Purdue. Ivy all the way. Kicks it out. Stefanovic for three. Couldn't get it. And Stewart with the rebound. Indiana by two. Johnson. Good pass and the finish. It's Race Thompson for the dunk. The decision making for the Hoosiers throughout this game has been exquisite in regards to making the right play. And that time, Johnson, again, some of those passes can be tipped. So excellent spacing also by the Hoosiers offensively. Another good kick out from Edie. This time it's a three from Gillis. He's got eight, and it's a one-point game. And so Purdue has come out with energy and their offense here in this second half. Nine-point deficit down to one, and we get a whistle. Now, can they get their offense back where it was in the first half? Playing without their best player. Stewart will kick it. And Durr will get it home. Don't get a lot of offense from Michael Durr, the big seven-footer, averaging under two points a game, but they'll take it. There's Thompson back to Ivy. He's got quick eight points in this half. Purdue, four or five from three point land in this half. And number one in the conference in three point shooting. Great defense that time by Indiana. And the steal. Stewart. And he gets fouled. And he's got them both. Defense there. Pop was all over him. Now it's Edie. Double comes, gets it to Ivy for three. Long that time. Tipped around and he's on the baseline. That call. So excellent defense and double team and recognition that time by the Hoosiers. Here's Xavier Johnson. Both guards have been great. He and Finnessy off the bench. We're still on the bench, start the second half. Johnson's got 10. Finnessy 17 in the game. They've carried the offense. Shot clock at four. Johnson lost it. Knows he has to hoist it up. He does, and he hits it. <laughs> when it's going your way, it's going your way. Eight-point lead for Indiana. And Ivy gets hand checked. Oh, 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 oh goodness. Oh. That was a hard fall, and he's hot, and you can understand why. Because the play was already dead. Yeah. 
feistiness tonight yep. in this game. As you as you would expect though. Ivy aggressive move mm. and slams it home. He is really having a heck of a second half now make it 13 points. And 11 have come in this half. But but smart play call because he's been involved in the activity of the offense just got a flagrant foul and Matt Painter drew that play up for a one on one opportunity for Ivy to take advantage of. Cross court Johnson there with the swing. Stewart one on two can't get it to go fighting for the board and uh, the shot clock expired three rebounds and a steal to go with that. Ivy feeling good takes it in and rejected by Dern the seven footer. Johnson going to go all the way home and score. Mike Woodson said the other day if Johnson and Finnessy if they could get an idea of what I want on offense then we're going to be a threat. They're a threat tonight. Travion Williams has been ultra quiet and a whistle and he gets a foul. Kevin, not quite finding his sea legs to the advantage of the Hoosiers. And he missed both free throws to boot. Yep. Here's Finnessy. Gets a screen. Turned the corner that time, just too much contact by Williams. Stays with Indiana. Well, that's the beauty about the game. Other guys tend to step up in situations when it's not expected, and it's been a host of guys, and Finnessy being one of them that has really stepped up to the plate. Here's Hunter. Takes it to the rack. No finish and a rebound by Thompson. Interesting that coach Woodson going with Johnson and Finnessy together in the back order. They've both been great. This is Thompson. Pop for three. No. Stefanovic, his three is in and out, and then somehow tipped in. That might have been Thompson. It was. <laughs> he did everything right that time. Just could not corral that all that defensive rebound. <laughs> Him having a soft touch to tip it right in for the Boilermakers. Indiana by five, almost halfway through this second half, and it's Johnson. Good setup there. Spinning and hitting is Trey Galloway. Nice move. He's got six points. How about the decision that time by Galloway not to take the three, not to settle? Able to put it on the deck. Nice little spin move. Nice little jump shot inside. It's only his fifth game back at a fractured wrist. And there is Ivy strong to the glass and a chance for a three point play. flagrant fouls tonight. Indiana had a nine point lead at half and Ivy misses the free throw loose ball goes to Indiana. Boy that looked like it was off of Indiana but I could be wrong instead the Hoosiers will get it. Let's see. Can we see at the end great hustle by both players in it. Oh, oh, oh is that. Oh. Well, it's too late now. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was Let's close. Play, play on. <laughs> yeah, keep on going. Uh, so here is the X-Man, Xavier Johnson from downtown. You know, not the prettiest jump shot, but at the end he was able to leave it up, and the defense went under. Xavier Johnson played some really good basketball. 18 points, able to knock in his second three-pointer. Either help you or, or hurt you. So let's keep our eye on that free throw. You know, the situation as well with Indiana. Ivy with 17 now. Six point lead for the Hoosiers. Galloway cut off. Oh, nice. 
nice move, and Johnson can't finish. Everything was there, just left it a little bit short. Ivy kicks it out. Wide open three is no good. Morton had a good look. Gillis wide open from three. He connects. Gillis three for four from downtown here tonight. It's a three point lead under 10 minutes to go. Tough kick out, Finnessy driving, good dish to Durr, he gets hit, he'll go to the line. Doesn't shoot a lot of them. When to bring Trace back, make those three fouls. Well, Durr hits both free throws, he's got four points. Here tonight, back up to a five point lead. Number four, Purdue, all they can handle tonight here in Bloomington. We'll just pull up from the elbow mm. and a soft touch. Jade and Ivy now is 19. And so a game high for Ivy. Well, Johnson with the ball for Indiana. Number zero, he's got 18 for the Hoosiers. Kind of floats one up there. It's a brick, and it's Ivy who has it. Edie posting up, wants it, can't get it to him. Ivy Dirt just put his hands up and got yeah. a block. He will allow you to offset. Stefanovic there on the lay-in. Well, <laughs> you can't offset that. That's two underneath out-of-bounds plays that Indiana has fell asleep on. But to finish that point, offset that your best player, who's now back in the game, has not been able to be as effective because of foul trouble. Yeah, and there he is. With the ball, Trace Jackson Davis only played eight minutes, trying to get him involved. And he jumped up, and he gets fouled. So how does this happen out of the timeout? Well, I can tell you, obviously, that the underneath out-of-bounds is that the as Savanovic comes here, this defensive player probably jumps to the outside. Okay? And when that happens, and again, there was a miscommunication on the switch with Fennessey and Johnson. So two things went wrong on that particular defensive possession by the Hoosier. Great pass inside. Thompson is there, but what a feed indeed for Thompson, who's got nine points now. Edie had nine points in the first half, has not taken a shot in the second half. Got to get him going again. Here he is. And we got a whistle. Well, this is a very nice response by the Hoosiers offense. Again, predicated on movement. Shift the defense a little bit. Edie made the mistake of coming up off the baseline too high. And that's because of the respect he had for TJD right there at the free throw line. And the foul oh. is called on Trace Jackson Davis. It's unbelievable. He, he, wow. And he's been out basically the entire game. It's his wow. fourth foul now. So now we told you Edie has usually got a soft touch at the line. Nine points in the first half. No field goal attempts in the second half. And now misses the front end, and Indiana's got the offensive board, or make it the defensive board. He's got to be losing his mind right now, right? I mean, but it, it's hard to, to really keep your mind in the game when you know that maybe a couple of the calls weren't warranted in your mind. Galloway. Making it happen almost, but it came up a little short. No numbers. So Thompson will slow it up. Stefano pitched from deep. Every time Purdue sees yeah. a little bit of an opening, they can't quite get through the door. 
Yes, the bottom is only one for seven from behind the arc. Had some good looks. Okay, and a lot of those, but Indiana's been able to dodge the bullet of employee number 55 getting hot a little bit. <laughs> I like that. Thompson in the post. Righty floater is no good. A collision for the rebound, but Gillis and Purdue have it. Thunder six to play. Ivy from deep. In and out, no good. Rebounded by the Hoosiers. Good effort from Xavier Johnson. He's had a terrific game. Running the show, 18 points for him as well. Go along with four rebounds and two assists. Here he is attacking the rim. Bank shot, no good. Rebound Stefanovic and Purdue. Man, those are tough shots, too. Kind of going up against Zach Eady, falling away. That requires some touch. And speaking of touch, how about the pass inside and then the soft hands from Ivy to Eady to be able to catch, gather, and finish? That was really impressive to grab that pass and finish it easily for Edey. First bucket of the second half. Again, it's a one-point game, Indiana in front. Galloway way off. Thompson thinks about running. Ivy, one of the best in transition. Euro step, pass out. Thompson for three. No good. Rebound tipped around. Here come the Hoosiers. Galloway against Safanovic all the way and in. Trey Galloway back up to a three-point lead. Everyone on their feet. Edie patience and draws the foul. Burst of energy. I mean, it's only his fifth game back after that fractured wrist, but yeah. he, he gives you a little juice. Oh, he does. I mean, now he's going to, and you got to live with some of the mistakes that they may make because of that exuberance, because he wants to go out there and prove it, but that was an excellent opportunity for him to use that excitement in the right way by getting that transition basket. Here's Fennessey, had that terrific first half, hasn't scored in the second half. 17 points first half, under four to go. And Ivy all over him. Kick out from the corner for three, no. And the rebound by Purdue and Edie. Yeah, but that's where you want Ray Thompson. You want him to be beyond the three-point line. If he wants to take that shot, you can test it a little bit. Oh. Ivy, oh, man, is that pretty. And we are tied. And I guess who's coming back to the scorer's table? Number 23. You better believe it. About due time. Indiana's done an amazing job essentially playing the whole game without him. But we're tied. 312 to go. Johnson flips it over to Thompson in trouble. With one dribble way off the mark. And it's rebounded by Edie and Purdue. And another successful defensive stop that time. Hands up and race. Thompson kind of caught that pass behind the backboard. Not an easy look once he turned inside to shoot that jump hook. Purdue has not led this half. Ivy, spin, long, no good. Rebound by the Hoosiers. Two and a half to play. And we get a timeout. Over the 17th ranked Boilermaker. So Mike Woodson trying to pull the trick over the number four team in the land. Tied at 63. 225 to go. Here's Johnson at Indiana with the ball. Trace Jackson Davis down low. Watson. He's playing with four fouls. Shot clock winding down. It's at three. Johnson will have to launch, not even close, and it's an air ball. And see, that's the challenge of when you get Trace Jackson Davis back in the game. The tendency is to try to force feed him, and now your offense becomes stagnant. Yet, you dig into the shot clock, and now an empty possession down the stretch of the game for Indiana. Ivy 
Big second half for him. Hunter the senior. Williams against Jackson Davis. The spin. No good. Finnessy's got it. I like the thought process of going to Williams to force Trace Jackson Davis to have to guard him inside that time. This is a tougher shot. I think Williams made himself. Quick double. Going to make a move inside. Beauty through the foul. He'll be shooting two. They get Williams. And this is the effect, too, when you're able to now get TJD in isolation. His ability to handle the basketball, be creative, get by his guy, and then pick up the foul. But that time the ball went from one side to the other. Then he was able to attack. That's when that gap and that opening on the baseline was able to be open. Think about this as he misses the first. You see, he's only played 10 minutes tonight with that foul trouble since the beginning. He's never had less than 21 minutes. So you just wonder how you talked about the team handling yep. him back. How is he handling it? Just dealing with trying to finish strong after not playing. Well, you play this game long enough, it's going to happen at mm -hmm. some point. Now, how you handle it is a different mm -hmm. thing. I think he's handled it well in regards to not being frustrated, but also supporting his teammates and not trying to do too much when he's been back in the game offensively to make up for lost time. People can tell you about it all the time, but until you experience a beautiful play, another one, you know, situational basketball by Purdue has been excellent in this second half. Two out-of-bounds plays underneath score, and that one from the side. Johnson underneath gets partially blocked, puts it up, no good. Purdue in front, the first lead they've had, 6-6-23 six, six, in the first half, and now up by two with the ball. And another timeout by the Boilermaker. 50 seconds to go. Tried to get it to Ivy, but he's covered well. Now it's Travion Williams. One on one against Jackson Davis. Mm. A spin and just missed everything. Ball is tipped around. It'll go to Indiana. Xavier Johnson, who's played extremely well in this second half, or does he? figure out a way for TJD to be able to use his athleticism and get to the basket. How about a three from Finnessy? No. Tipped around. Stage with the Hoosiers with 18 to play. And that was the first field goal attempt in the second half by Finnessy. So a lot of confidence in that play by Mike Woodson to draw it up came up a little bit short. He had 17 in the first half. It's not been an offensive factor here in the second half. Galloway will inbound. Finnessy lets it go from deep. He's got it! Wow. Talk about guts. Finnessy from downtown at a one-point Hoosier lead. It's a new career high for Rob Finnessy. Didn't I just say it wasn't going to be an offense, an easy offensive possession? I thought so. <laughs> but, I mean, but this is just a simple screen. And, again, Stefanovic, you go under the screen. And I know the scouting report says about Fennessey that he's only a 27% three-point shooter, but he's made some tonight. So you have to make that adjustment. In particular, in late-game situations, you don't give your opponent a wide-open look. And I know he just missed. But this time, because of that mistake, he made you pay. You talked about early in the game, you want to see his confidence come back. I think it's come back. Yep. Indiana by one, Purdue basketball, and they will call their final timeout to draw up a play with 12 and a half seconds to go. Here we go. 12 seconds to play. Ivy to throw it in. Back to Ivy. Takes it all the way. The floater is no good. Tipped around. Rebound by the Hoosiers. Jackson Davis is fouled. You know, the play drawn up. You get it back to Ivy on the run. But look who switched out. Yeah, may not have had a lot of PT on the court. Not playing the kind of game that he wished he had to, has been playing. But when he needed a defensive stop, guess who was there? You got it. TJD. Now a chance at the free throw line. 
to extend the lead. He's got one. This obviously a biggie. It means they couldn't get beat on a last second shot. Yeah, no timeouts for Purdue. Three point lead. Five seconds left. No timeouts. Ivy with two. Step back three is no good. 